release. Breath in. Exhale that breath. Just allow yourself now to relax more and more. Because from this moment in time, there's nothing, nothing of importance for you to do except relax. Hey humans, welcome to Scarlet Letter Show, Season 3, Episode 7. This is your host, Scarlet Santa Maria, providing a space for self-expression for San Diego's electronic music artists. And let me tell you all about my weekend. I was finally able to go out because I'm not sick anymore. Yeah, I still feel like my voice sounds a little raspy, but you know, it's okay. I can sound a little manly once in a while. <laughs> Friday, I went to Disco Under the Sea presented by the deep end and bump and honestly it was amazing beginning to end i got there kind of early actually so and, and it was kind of busy already so good vibes straight from the beginning it was cool to see people dressed up i saw some mermaids for sure and i really loved the decoration i was living for the blue shades and the fish balloons that was that was for sure my favorite and of course the music was super groovy it was pretty much a perfect summer night party y'all deep end and always creates a fun and welcoming atmosphere for their guests. And I really appreciate that. And then Saturday, I checked out House to Ourselves in the Matrix. If you know me, you know I love to wear black. So the theme was right up my alley. This event took place in a location that I've never been before. And I actually really liked it. So I'll give you a quick rundown. I got in and I saw the main stage in the first room with LED surrounded, making it a loud line of a house. And I thought it was really clever, right? House to ourselves, you get it? I got it right away. I walked down and there was another room with a with like a second area with like art stands and bar and music and a dancing space. And you keep walking and there's another room with a second stage that was actually my favorite because the music was like a lot more bumpy. And when I reached the end of the hallway, there was a big open chill area with, guess what, a taco stand. Yes, it doesn't get any better than that. The HGO crew knows how to throw a party, and it was bomb. I'm a big fan of Anything Dark, so that was definitely one of my favorites. And actually, tonight's guest had a great set of house to ourselves. So let's hear what he has to say about it. Ophir, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Yeah. How are you doing tonight? Tell I'm, me. I'm awesome. Yeah, you are. I'm, I'm still like buzzing off that party. It was pretty incredible. And that was my first time like seeing the house to ourselves boys like pre-production show up to the party. It was like a freight train of a, you know, like a factory assembly yeah. line. Like all the boys are standing there waiting for the U-Haul truck to show up. Boom, U-Haul opens up, everyone's like pacing, running speakers into it. Like this we did this entire party ourselves. Like Yeah. It's a, it's a full production, and it's like so many homies coming together, crushing it together. It was amazing, and, and I'm already a big fan of them. I had them in my show. They were like my second guest, and I know that they work hard, and they're all about the community and collaborating. And yeah, and they were just telling me. I was having lunch with them right before this. We were talking about the House to Ourselves party, and they're like, oh, you're going on Scarlet tonight? Hell yeah. Like, we were there the second episode. Yeah. <laughs> So that's awesome. It's great that you had a good experience, and, and so did I. I. Whenever I go, I always have the best time. So I want to focus on, on you now. Well, this is all it's about you, but shout out to House to Ourselves. You have a really interesting musical background. You have a variety of talents, and which have led you to where you are today. And I'm really excited to hear your story. And I'd like to start from the very beginning. You taught yourself how to play guitar, bass, and drums at the age of 12. Yeah, so... What sparked your interest to playing those instruments? Even, like, before that, when I was seven, my dad, like, he had to do clarinet lessons, and, like, he hated clarinet, so he, like, stole the money and bought records with it. <laughs> he actually was a DJ, like, in the 60s in Israel, and he would, like, play disco and funk and all this, like, fun stuff you could dance to, and he was, like, really into Zeppelin and Jimi Hendrix and stuff like that. It's so cool. So that really influenced me because when I was a kid, my dad was, like, bumping Led Zeppelin and Prince and Jimmy Page and all this cool music that was great. And uh, so it kind of influenced me to go to this funky style, and I started playing guitar. Like, he forced me to do a guitar lesson. I was like, I need you to get a little closer to the mic. Closer to the mic? Can yeah. you hear me oh, now? Oh, there you go. Oh. Yeah. 
Okay. All right, that is yeah. better. Yeah. I can hear myself. Okay. So let's start over. So in the <laughs> 60s, my dad was a DJ, and he yeah. used to bump, like, Prince and yeah. disco and stuff. And so basically he had to do, like, clarinet lessons. Yeah. And he hated it. So he made me do guitar lessons because he thought guitar was cool. And he's like, I'm going to vicariously live through you. <laughs> and I'm going to make you take guitar lessons. I'm like, all right, cool. Like, I'm down. And then I was a little kid. I was seven years old. I hated it. I couldn't hold the guitar. It was, like, way too hard to You're play. Like, I hate this. And he taught me, like, or my lesson was, like, Louie Louie. I was playing, like. Yeah. Oh, I was going to ask you, what was the first song you learned? And here you go. I got a live show right now, y'all. So, so that was the first song I ever learned, and I fucking hated it. I don't know oh, if I could you, say you the word. You can't. I won't say it again. Okay. <laughs> All right. It's okay. I just slapped my hand. Dude, no, no worries. It happens every time, and I have a button here to dump or, like, have a delay, but I'm always too late. I'm like, oh, yeah, and then, oh. But no worries. You know, it's an AM station, I'm sure, like the FCC, like, they're not yeah. listening right now. They're going to, so, like, just blow in through my window at night. <laughs> I know who is Ophir. Yeah, but I think so. That's we really digress. Awesome. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's really awesome your story because I have kind of a similar story. My dad, he used to be a super big DJ in, in Tijuana back in the days. Sweet. Yeah, and uh, he taught me what I know about music, and he still DJs actually. He's fifty, nice. and he's still like doing the stuff in Tijuana. No, well, all over like here in San Diego, he DJs at City Tacos. Nice, and like Romesco. So. I, I, I know. love City Tacos. Yeah, Co- Taco going on Tuesday. On Taco Tuesday, Tuesday and say yeah. hi to him, yeah. Oh, sweet. So, I will. So I think it's really cool that we, we share that same story about our fathers influencing us in the music. Yeah. Piece. So basically, I hated it when I was seven. And then when I was 12, I was like, yo, Dad, I, I do want to pick this up now. He's like, hell no. Like, I bought you a guitar when you were seven. You didn't pick it up. You did not take your lesson seriously. I'm not doing it. So then it kind of forced me to, like, dive into it. And I had to do it on my own, and I had to save up money, buy my own guitar, yeah, like, you don't learn. teach myself on – YouTube didn't even exist at that time. I know. So I was looking up guitar tabs and learning, like, Blink-182 songs and, like, Sublime songs and No Doubt and stuff like that. And that's pretty much what, like, started me throwing parties in L.A., like, in the early – or not early 90s. That's when you like, started getting 2000s. involved in, in bands. Yeah, playing, like, funk and rock and ska bands and, like – the whole, like, No Doubt, Sublime, yeah. that thing, moving into the, yeah. like, Thrice That's and, like, cool. Screamo stuff, like, Taking Back Sunday and Thrice and all that. Yeah, you, you just, like, went for it. You you bought your own stuff. I actually, like, recently just bought a keyboard, and I've been trying to learn. And it, How's it going? It's great. I've been, I've been starting to look at YouTube videos. But back in the day, like you said, we didn't, you didn't have that. So you had to just work extra hard yeah. to find a way to learn You'd on your own. You'd look for like a guitar blog or yeah. something like that. And, <laughs> and you're that. originally from West Hollywood, and you moved to San Diego for college, yeah. right? In fact, you're, you're, at, a, you're a fellow Aztec. Yeah, SDSU. And you, you studied here. real estate. Is that still part of your life, or are you still just focused on music right now? Um. I've pretty much retired in real estate. I still own my real estate company, and we actually do housing here at SDSU, but okay. let's not get into that. Oh, yeah, no, no. I, but, it, just, uh, it was just, like, interesting because I saw that you're an Aztec, so it, was yeah. cool to, it would be interesting to bring it up and see if that's still. So when I graduated, I graduated with a real estate license because my dad was like, you should do business or real estate or something like that. And yeah. I'm glad I did because, like, it helped me, like, learn like values to like start a career and learn how to brand a company and i got was able to like do my own photography and do my own web design and start learning how to brand a company and now i've been able to apply in my dj stuff like as a musician i've been able to make my own shirts i do all my own logos i do all my own design work I'm going to start hanging out with you more. Made my own yeah. website. Need to get some skills. I record myself like when i play music and I've learned all these like multi-talented stuff through business. You yeah, know? and you've applied it to what you do now. Yeah, and it works out. It's perfect. Totally. And as, as much as I want to keep going, it's time for the music break. And okay, cool. I want to know what can I expect in the first half of the mix. So this was my live set at Kava Lounge. I was playing guitar and DJing. My buddy Milad has the Umbrella Friends. Oh man, I've never event. been. I've been wanting to check it out. It's pretty rad. They they like turned Kava Lounge into a different universe. Like, there's all these umbrellas and these floating like LED clouds and stuff. It's really yeah. Cool. I've heard. I haven't had a chance to check it out, but 
But it's a vibe, so I brought some vibes. It's kind of a mellow mix, but because, like, the place looked like a vibe, I kind of played off (laughs) of that, you know? Fantastic. Well, I think we're ready to turn it up in the studio, and we'll be back in 10 minutes with the longer interview. And you already know the drill. Check out the live stream right now, Scarlet Letter Show on Facebook. And you're listening to KCR College Radio, the award-winning Sound of Sticks. (laughs) Party people. Here we are again. Is that mix groovy or what? Just a smidge. <laughs> now, I just have to do some announcements as usual before we go on the longer interview. So, are you a fan of podcasts? Make sure to tune in on KCR On Demand, the newest platform of entertainment for you. Oh, from your radio host. I've said this like a million times, and I don't know why I'm stuttering. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here at SESU, find us on Apple Podcasts and SoundCloud at KCR College Radio. And also, you should check out North Parks Observatory because there are our sponsors, and they're cool. So check out our ticket giveaways at KCR College Radio or via KCRlive.com. And lastly... Techniche returns to the Hillcrest City Fest for a day to night tech house and techno event from 4 to 10 p.m. with resident DJs, Mixoplex, John Bilotti, and special guest Sethis. I'm sure, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. This is a free event, y'all. All you have to do is bring your ID because it's a 21 and up event and you're good vibes, so don't miss out. And back to your story. You started off playing bands. What yeah, influence? where do we leave? Where do we I leave know, off? I don't even remember because we've been talking for the last ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know what influenced you to transition into DJing and the whole electronic music scene. So I joined a band, or I started a band with my buddy Drew called Shell Shock, and he invented this like lightning drum kit, and we were playing like EDM, and this was like geared for like Las Vegas and music festivals and huge production type stuff. He literally invented a drum kit with lightning inside of it. Damn. And it was hooked up to 50,000 volts of Tesla coils. <laughs> and so we started playing EDM, and we had our buddy, another buddy named Drew, Andrew Krause, who's a great producer, and he was working on productions with us. And he was our DJ at the time, and then he basically wanted to be more of a producer and didn't want to DJ. He didn't really like playing shows so much. He was okay, more but what a, about your story? Let's uh, your, <laughs> right, stay right, on right, me. I'm right, sorry. Right. I always talk about the people around me. Yeah, no, let's, let's, we are let's a support like, system. Yeah, yeah. Know? And we're, we're a community. Yeah, yeah. So basically, like, he didn't want to play live. So I was like, well, I've had turntables at my house since I was like 15. My older brother's a DJ. So basically, like, my brother taught me how to DJ a long time ago. Damn, I was like, I could just like do it. Like, fam- like a DJ family. You're yeah. passing on to generations. Yeah, so my dad, me, my older brother, and my little brother all uh, were DJs. And, and, you're t- and you're teaching your little brother, or did you all learn from your older brother? Um, my older brother taught me, and then I taught my little brother. Damn. And we both kind of taught him, but like I was the first one to like kind of give him the the like initial push and i taught him like five minutes before his first show you guys should all do a b2b your we dad have. you everyone um, not with my dad though. Oh, okay not with my like, dad all your the three brothers together three brothers together yeah we've done a couple of shows together damn but um uh, basically once drew quit the band i was like all right well i'll just i'll just pick up i could dj like so i just brought all my gear and i started djing and playing guitar at the same time for this band and then after a couple of years, I was like, you know what? I kind of want to do this by myself so I can have, like, direction, like, freedom of direction. Yeah. I could play any event. I could do, like, I was doing funk sets. I was doing, like, hip-hop, 90s hip-hop, like Snoop Dogg and Dr. Dre and Warren G and, like, that vibe. And, like, Looney's, like, I got five on it. <laughs> like, shit like that. I mean, stuff like that. <laughs> Actually, technically, that's not a bad word. Um, well, whatever. TV. It doesn't matter. Let's just move <laughs> past it. Strike two. <laughs> if I get kicked out, you all know, you already know it's Ophir's yeah, fault. Yeah, <laughs> I'm trying to make a mark on this. Okay. So um, basically, then I like was doing like anything funky, pretty much like '90s hip hop. Anybody who had like funk influence, I was I was down for. So I started wanting to go solo just so I could do whatever I want, and I was playing like Prince remixes and funk remixes that I could find and playing guitar to it. And I always like grew up jamming guitar to tracks. Mm -hmm. That's how I learned how to play. I would just learn my favorite songs 
So I'm like jamming guitar along to songs. And now I'm like, well, why don't I just do this like in public? Because like, that's what I'm doing anyways. But now I'm just mixing and adding effects and also playing guitar at the same time. So it kind of came naturally because that's what I was doing in my bedroom anyways, like yeah. through all of high school, it's college worked out. until now. So how long have you been DJing like the electronic sound? Three years. I've been doing like live sets with guitar. Okay, that's yeah. really cool. And what genres do you prefer to play? All things funky. All things and groovy. funky and groovy. Even if it's like techno, it's got to be groovy. It's got to have like, a, just for me, I like stuff that swings, stuff you could dance to. And then I really love like melody and stuff that's melodic and people who actually like know music theory and like dive deeper into songwriting. Like I, I notice like seventh harmonies and ninth harmonies and people who you have an ear for it, who have intention course. with the writing process, you know. And what is the creative process when you're putting a mix together? Um, I actually kind of just organize a bunch of different playlists of vibe. I'm like, I don't know if this is going to be a super mellow party or if this is going to be a turned up like. So usually I do like a super vibey melodic set where it's just a big folder of a ton of music. I could just go in there and freestyle off of it and just pick whatever I want. Then I'll have something super funky, groovy, fun, dance party stuff. And then I'll have like some darker tones and and just have four playlists or so that are kind of like... You're just prepared. Yeah, just like just options. Yeah. You just have a bunch of options and then kind of just go through that and... And then also try and set an intention to have like a musical journey, like start off super vibey, bring it up a notch, add a groovy bass line, bring it up a notch, maybe get a little yeah. darker and harder. I understand. I, yeah. I love it when, because you come from a musical background, so you, you know, you have, it has to be kind of like that, like kind of like a roller coaster. Dynamic. Dynamic. Yeah, yeah you exactly. have to. You can't be all over the place because you're like, what's like like Yeah, well, I kind of am all over the place, but you have to do it like in a very smoothly. smooth, seamless transition and then kind of know which tracks are your transition tracks. Like if I'm going to go from like super deep tech and then I want to get to disco eventually just because it's a fun party or something like that and I want to start like very vibey, but then I want to go fun. You got to know that like house track that's got a little bit of disco, a little bit of yeah, you like just gotta melodic know your vibe. Stuff. Yeah, sh- I was gonna say it now. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> sh- <laughs> okay, so I really appreciate the the live element in, in your DJ sets because you don't see that that often. The only ones that I know are Goldfish because they have their saxophone. Yeah, and but those I, guys are awesome. They are. They're good friends. Every of time mine. I see them, I'm like, yeah, I love it. I I'm love playing it. with them on August 17th. Oh, okay, that's awesome. Yeah, at the Music Box. Oh, I, got, I gotta go. See Show you. plug. Yeah, I gotta go see you. I was actually gonna ask you about your your events, but it's if you want to plug it in now, you can totally go ahead. Sure, I'm playing uh, tomorrow at the Holding Company. They just like reopened. They did like a beautiful remodel of the place, and they have a phenomenal sound system. So I'm really excited to like get back in there so that's in ocean beach we're doing a set upstairs like on the on the not rooftop but they have like an in-between area that's like a restaurant and uh we do dj sets there set set the tone like vibey groovy stuff fun and then we move downstairs and throw a dance party for the rest of the night so that starts at seven goes till 2 a.m i'm playing with my buddy carlo who I actually played Lightning in a Bottle with. He's also a really cool DJ. Super cool. Thanks yeah. for sharing. Sure. I got to check you out soon. Tomorrow night? I wish oh. I work. Aww. Yeah, I know. I do too, actually. Yeah, At you're going to be there. <laughs> yeah. So what is your favorite instrument to play out of all everything that you play? Um, that is kind of a loaded question. That's tough. I Guitar is where I started, yeah. and I love it the most. It was a um, love and hate relationship at first, but now you love it. Yeah, because yeah. it hurts. Yeah, you know, it rips up your fingers, it hurts your hands, your, and so on. But in a band, my favorite is bass, because like you get to play the whole time. Like with guitar, I try and be very tasteful and like sit back a lot okay. and be like reserved. Okay. And come in and out like a boxer. You kind of gotta like bob and weave. <laughs> but with bass, you're like. <laughs> that's the backbone. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. The okay. baseline is the backbone. Yeah. And how often and for how long do you practice? 
Um, lately, I don't practice too much. I kind of just like pick up a guitar you're so whenever. you're experienced. You're just like, I don't need to practice. Yeah, I've been playing for like a very long time. And I used to practice a lot. But now I play like twice to three times a week. So that kind of is practice. And yeah. I will, if it's like a music festival or something like that, I'll like pick up my guitar before and warm up. It's more like warm ups okay. than practice now. Yeah. So I'll warm up before a show. And how do you handle mistakes during a performance? It's all about, like, first of all, like, mistakes are cool because it's a human element. But if you know your stuff, then you you're just... probably not going to have a mistake. It's more like accidentally bumping into something and making a squeal or something like that. But I know what notes to play. When I hear a song, I know what notes to play. He knows. Yeah. It's, it's just like you study that. Yeah, definitely. And what does being a DJ mean to you? I feel like we've all been DJs in our life, like, through the iPod. Once the iPod came out, like, anyone could be a DJ and just play music. Basically. And, like, I kind of feel like that's the beginning of it. It's like, oh, how do I curate a vibe for this party? Like, I just have my friends over, and I want to curate a vibe. So I feel like it's really just knowing what time it is and what to play at that time. Basically. Like, I can't stand appropriate for the clock. Yeah. So to me, it's like being a vibe curator at the right time, right place. All right. That was the perfect way to, to phrase it. And because I completely agree. You got to you. You start somewhere and then build up to the big finale. Yeah. And what keeps you motivated to create music and keep going on this journey? Well, I just like have always wanted to be a musician for my career. And I've kind of set it up so that I can be now. And I'm like a driven person. Like I'm always, I, when I was in college, I had three jobs. I was playing in a band, working three jobs, working at a pool, doing photography on the side. And just Same. like, <laughs> I'm always like driven to just do cool stuff. You're a go-getter. You just do things. Yeah. And just to like fuel my passion. Like I've always loved music. I've been playing in bands since I was 13 years old. So it's just kind of like, it's, I, I don't know, it's like subconscious. I just do it. I don't, like, I'll treat it like a job. Like, even though it's like, oh, I got to go meet up with a buddy to jam, and I'll treat it like a work shift. And I'm like, no, I can't, I can't go to the bar with you. I have to go. I said I'm going to go jam, you know? Yeah, because you have to. And we're going to go work on music, and I kind of, like, create the space and create the time for it, and I treat it literally like a job or something yeah you and take you actually of... take it seriously and that's something to be respected because there's some people in the scene that don't take it as seriously and they they do it for the wrong intentions and you actually are passionate and that's just like your life yeah i mean the dream is to travel the world and like spread the message of love and taking care of the environment and cleaning up the oceans and cleaning up the earth and like avoiding pollution and stuff like that And you Through will. Music. You will with this beautiful attitude that you have, man. Yeah, like if if I could travel the world with my guitar, that's why I'm like so driven to do this. That that'd be like the ultimate thing. Well, you're on your way. You're yeah, doing things. I played in Mexico last month. There you go. Boom. Like you're, you're one step closer. That's so awesome. I'm so so proud of you. Even though we're not super close, but I just I'm feeling of your energy right now, and I see that you're a genuine person. And I really appreciate you being here. And I'm like, I'm just so excited about what's coming up for you. Like, Absolutely. Really. Thank you so much. So, okay. I want to know about all of the events that you've played in your musical career. Which one has made the most significant impact in your life? And it doesn't have to be specific to electronic music. It can be like from your band days or whatever. Yeah, sure. Um, there's a couple really cool ones. I mean, do I have some time? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Uh, no, not that much. I played like hundreds of shows so it's kind of yeah tough. i know but uh last year in alaska was really cool i played the summer solstice festival and it's sunset the entire day and or not day but like from eight seven eight p.m it's sunset and then the sunset stays there oh. and i played from midnight to 3 a.m with my buddy Bo, dj mancat i played guitar for him and we had my buddy jeremy deets on the drums he now lives in denver plays in like punk bands It was sunset for our whole three-hour set. Wow. From midnight to 3 a.m. I would cry. And we played uh, two shows with Cut Copy, which was really cool, in Alaska. So I was playing with this big band, sunset. It, I felt like I had made it, you know? 
And then uh, last month in Genius Loki Festival, sunset set on the beach. I'm a Henry sucker for Pope. sunsets. Yeah, Henry like, Pope picked me up. People always ask, like, oh, I noticed you, like, play, like, really vibey stuff. I'm like, yeah, I'm trying to position myself for sunset sets on the beach or at Burning Man. That's my vibe. I want to be That's sunset, like, really, 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 like, uplifting, good vibes, all about it. All about it. I love it. Thank you for sharing. And, oh, man, we don't have a lot of time, but I want to quickly talk about your event producing experience and tell me about your brand, uh, Kino Village. So me and my brother started Kino Village uh, almost a year ago. And basically, we wanted just like another platform to throw parties and have a good time. And it, it's been a great learning experience because, again, like as a business owner, I've learned like all aspects of event production. Like I literally make the flyer and do all the promotion and book all the DJs with my brother. Obviously, my brother helps me with all of this. Yeah. And uh, his name's Oren, by the way. Shout out to Shout Oren. Out. What up? You better be listening. <laughs> you better. <laughs> but yeah, Oren and I started it about a year ago, and it's been cool. He's been hustling like so hard on getting lots of local stuff and building it from like grassroots style, like small shows. And then now we've like grown into renting out big event spaces and yes. throwing crossed after parties. And we threw, uh, a, he, Oren and I partnered up with House to Ourselves and Stay Bad Guys and Flatline for, for this last Matrix party. And it's, it's cool. I mean, it's a lot of work. Yeah. And it's like, definitely. It's like, uh, you definitely have to be passionate about it. It's literally like a two month job. You take on like a, a part time job for two months for every single event, and then you have like five events in parallel through the whole summer. Oof. And it's insane. Like, I'm like full time on the computer promoting, coming up with branding ideas, coming up with flyers, coming up with the art direction, and then also trying to bring in new music on the regular, and then also write new music and produce new music. So it's a lot to juggle, but it's like, like this last party you were there it was yeah so it was amazing awesome. so you get the like butterflies and the tingly feeling from like when you see it come to fruition and you're like all this work is worth it it's so so fun yeah I, I i completely understand and you do balance multiple roles in your life you're a writer a producer dj guitarist the bassist videographer graphic designer event producer all good vibe things. curator yeah all how things. do you manage to take care of your mental health with your busy life um i'm like i'm happy and i do a lot of yoga and i live on the beach and i've kind of like people are like oh you're gonna be so big you're gonna make it. i'm like no i've already made it and i want to be this big and i want to be right where i am like i want to be on the beach i want to travel occasionally i want to be have time for my friends like i don't want to be some superstar who has no time to hang exactly. out with their friends or no time to like focus on important things you know so but i forgot what the question was it was just about <laughs> taking care of your mental yeah. health but you said like you i'm just yoga, in a good place you're you know good, you're doing things that you like you're yeah. taking care of yourself inside yeah. and out you're you stay pretty active i see that you like surfing yeah and doing all that surfing is a big part of it because you can i mean there's no better place to watch the sunset than in the ocean i and know like, oh my god that's everything my favorite. like favorite. no matter how stressful your day is if you go like sit in the ocean at sunset watch, oh, and look at best. like the pink skies and orange skies that is how you have good mental health yes you will like relax and forget about work and forget about drama and the thing that you didn't do your taxes last week and it's coming up and the due dates and all that. All that goes away when you're looking at a pretty sunset in the beach. It's okay, we, we got to go sunset watching because that's literally my favorite thing in the world. Done and so, done. Okay, awesome. Man, unfortunately, we don't. I had so many questions, but I think we got the gist of it or, or most of it. But I, I definitely need to ask the question that I always ask everyone before we go on the second music break. And... What are your thoughts on San Diego's electronic music scene? You can start with some positive aspects and then maybe something that needs improvement. I think it's great. I really love it because I grew up in L.A. and I was throwing parties in L.A. and shows and stuff like that. And in L.A., you pay to play a lot of the time and it's really expensive and stuff like that. 
But San Diego has like so many people coming from all over the world to to be here, but on a lower scale than LA. Yeah. And it's smaller and it's not this like freak market like LA. So that's why people say it's like not much of a scene and there's not I mean, we can have more venues and bigger venues and cool venues like LA has a Blasco Theater and all these rad it's theaters changed. that are just yeah. beautiful and they're just such cool event spaces. And we don't have as much selection, but thank you to the venue owners who are providing us with something to work with. Yes. Like that's awesome that we have something. And I personally like I love that it's like medium size instead of huge. Like medium size is realistic. It's easy for underground stuff to come up. Like when you it's hard to transition from this 50 person party to this thousand person party where they require like a seven thousand dollar deposit for the venue or something like that. That is a really hard like gap to bridge. But in San Diego, kind of there's a lot of medium sized stuff. And yeah, medium sized stuff's like realistic. We could all do it. So like I love it. It's just the right size. It's just by Mexico. Like we, we got it all. Yeah, it's great. So I I think it's great. Obviously, like the downside, we could have more cooler venues, but I don't think we have the market to feed everyone. If there's like a hundred dope venues, well, they're all going to be kind of empty, and there's only going to be one packed one. You know. Yeah, so, and and I think the scene's also like slowly growing and growing. Oh, a hundred percent, it's growing. But it and you know certain festivals like local festivals that bring in five thousand people and stuff like that. Like it shows that there is a scene, but a lot well, of well, they they have the money for it. Yeah, so that's a big thing. I mean, thing. If, if I if I had money, I'd be throwing the best festival out there. Like yeah, you know? so that's I know that's also like a an issue for many people that throw events because they do it out of love, out of passion. But yeah, it, it is hard. It's truth of the matter is, I've been working in music for twenty years. There is not a lot of money in it. <laughs> <laughs> it's an act of love. You got to love it. And you got to fucking love it. Uh, uh, you got to okay. beat, them, All right, beat you're out. the struggle. You're out. Just you got to love the struggle. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for being here once again. I've, I really enjoyed this interview and I wish it was longer. But thank time, you for time, having time me. flies, right? When you're yeah. having fun. Totally. So now it's time to play the rest of your mix, and we'll be back in less than 10 minutes to wrap up the interview. I got like a couple more questions for you. Cool. So we'll be back soon. Wow. I'm vibing. It's a vibe. Yeah. Okay, y'all. I got a couple more questions for you. What advice would you give someone that wants to make it in the music industry? Well, I mean, technically speaking, I haven't made it in the, made it in the music <laughs> or industry. Or maybe there's someone that wants to follow your footsteps and yeah. wants to do what you do. Or... Um, I would highly recommend, like, invest in yourself. Learn all the tricks of the trade. Learn how to make flyers. Learn how to take photos. Learn how to play instruments. Study music theory. Like, people say, like, oh, it's better, like, you teach yourself or whatever. Like, no, study. Come on. Don't be lazy. Like, you can take your, to if you actually know your stuff and you actually study it, you're going to be able to communicate much better. So when you start doing collabs with other producers and stuff, you could speak the same language because you both know your stuff, yeah. you know? And, like, just just work hard at, like, this is a lifetime of like studying music and developing your craft. You're never going to be at your full potential. Like you can always get better. Yeah. So course. continue to dive into it. Learn all the tricks of the trade. Learn how to like make yourself look good on paper and online and have a couple of good photographer buddies <laughs> that never right. hurts. And and actually like present, be able to present yourself in in what you are like communicate there's so many bands and djs and stuff who are amazing but then when you look them up they, they don't look so great you exactly. know so make yourself stand out from the rest yeah sure and even just like if you're a filet mignon make sure people know that you're a filet mignon and that you don't look like a carl's jr burger <laughs> like i love that one look like a filet mignon yeah not like a carl's jr burger you heard it okay you gotta re you gotta represent it from the inside and out. Yeah, now I'm definitely not getting sponsored by Carl's Jr. <laughs> ah, it's all good. <laughs> all right. So, what does the future hold for Ophir? I'm uh, just 
traveling as much as possible and playing music and just having a good time and trusting the process, enjoying the process and just playing all the coolest festivals in the world. Yes. Or like, like I said, like I'm trying to gear towards sunset and sunrise sets at Burning Man and all the coolest festivals. Manifest it. I'm manifesting it. it. I, I've already got like four or five sets planned for this year at Burning Man. And yeah. I'm excited. I'm excited for you. Do you have any less shout outs or anything that you would like your fans to know? Um, I didn't really think about this, but shout out to uh, my brother Oren and my brother Ori who taught me how to DJ. Shout out to my dad, the OG, the OG. who used to throw parties in Israel in the 60s and mix on two turntables and start his own like lighting rig. But he invented his own lighting rig. Shout out to Papa and my mom. Like she supports me so much and like all they like always push me and like make sure I'm staying on top of my game. And shout out to Carlo, who I'm playing with tomorrow, who I played with Lightning in a Bottle or at Lightning in a Bottle with. Shout yeah. out to Ta Ray and Ian Xavier over at Grand Artique, who booked me at Lightning in a Bottle. Yeah. That was my first major festival. Oh my God. Shout out to Henry Pope for Genius Loki last month. That was amazing. Shout out to Marcus Wyatt and Josh, <laughs> the Lonely out. Boy. And Justin J and all the homies that have been working with me lately and the Stay Back crew, House to Ourselves hey, crew. Hey, shout out. PB Avenue, The Holding Company, Matt Spencer with Saran, Firehouse, and all them. They've all been taking such good care of me. That's beautiful. And I love everyone. DJ Susio. Hey, Susio. And Memo Rex, and Mitch homies. Dodge, Desert Hearts crew. Porky's been a close friend of mine. And Lee Reynolds. I, I hope we're going to put out track soon, Lee. We got some fire. Got some fire. Let's put it out. Yeah, I appreciate everyone who is currently listening or still watching the live stream. Thanks for the support and hope to see you all tonight at Riches for another installment of Techniche with special guest Austin Speed. I'll be uploading the full show and interview on my YouTube channel this weekend and I'll be sharing the links on my social. So have a fun night, everyone. Be safe. Thanks for being here. You're awesome. Thank you, Scarlett. Appreciate you. Till next Thursday. Woo.